Right team, cheers, I hope you're all well. I hope things are good your end. So this one is gonna be really interesting. On the success of that last video to do with the ultimate bug killing liquid, which you can see here, I don't mean the tiger, I mean the uh, link to the video. I have thought, you know what? I get a lot of people asking me how to identify the bug that they have a problem with, right? What I've done is I have put together two minutes, no more than that, just two minutes of images of different types of bugs with the name of the actual bug so that you can check those images, find your bug, and then you can then go and have a look in the timeline at the bottom of the video. You just click on the bottom and you'll see all the different types of predators there. So you'll have aphids, white fly, spider mite. There's eight different types. You just click on where you wanna go and that is then going to give you more information, video on the actual thing as to what they look like, how to identify them and how to nuke them. So it's gonna be really useful. Let's crack on and have a look at those images. Right team, I hope you found the little blighter. If you didn't though, don't worry. Let's go through all these bugs anyway, because it's really quite, there's some quite interesting footage anyway, and you are gonna get bugs in the future. So it's probably a quite good idea to have a look at these, so you, you kind of have it in the back of your head what it could possibly be. So let's start off with numero uno, the bad boy, the one that everyone's terrified about, but actually I don't have that much of an issue with. You can get rid of them relatively easily as long as you act quickly. That's absolutely the key with all of this. So numero uno, Monsieur Aphid. Aphids are a pain, no doubt. They are tiny. They are about five millimeters in length. They have long gangly legs. They're usually green. They're the ones I've seen predominantly on indoor systems. They will, in their lifespan, they will shed their skins four times. And you can really, really tell an aphid by all of the white little casings around the actual leaves. You can see those and that will happen a lot. So the white casings are a really big way of understanding whether you've got aphids. Shuffling the leaves to see those white um, casings comes out really works. Then secondly, they will also produce something called honeydew and a number of predators use honeydew. And what honeydew is, is basically it's sugar poo. I'd love to put it a different way, but essentially that's what it is. They will ingest the sap and what comes out of the other end is called honeydew. It is loved by ants and it's also loved by something called black sooty mold. And it's basically, it grows on the honeydew, this black stuff. And that's another indication you can see. If the leaves have got these black spots, then that's honeydew. So you can kind of hone it down. So aphids are a headache. They reproduce very, very quickly. They will give birth to live young. What that means is within seven days of an aphid coming out of its mother, it will then be 
producing another one immediately. So they produce babies and not eggs. What damage do they do? They damage the plant by basically puncturing the leaf and sucking the sap out of it. That is the predominant way you, you can, actually it's not the biggest way you can tell, those white casings are the biggest, but that's the damage it does. And if you have too many of them, they basically, they pucker the leaf so badly that they suck so much sap out that the leaf will then die. So that is aphids. They are extremely challenging once you have a large amount of them. So you've got to be on top of them. So aphids, what are you going to do about them? You're essentially going to take the plant out of the, uh, out of the system. You're going to run it under a stream of water to try and knock as many of them off as you possibly can. This will potentially set their colony back by quite a bit. Then what you have is two options. One, you can get some natural predators like ladybird, ladybird larvae. There's a whole load of different types that I'll put in the um, description below. Or you are gonna use that epic buggling concoction that I put in the other video. And if you have that, that will last you for a good two years. So it's a really good thing to have as uh, something there and available if something happens. So. Whether these are number two or not, I'm not quite sure. The one after this is also pretty heavy, but whitefly. Whitefly look like little white moths. You turn the leaf around and they will basically be nesting or sitting on the back of the leaf. They will fly away when you actually go near them. It's very difficult to actually physically take them out because they just disappear, right? So what do they eat? Well, they exactly the same as aphids, they hit the sap. So they are rasping insects. They will cut through the leaf and they will suck out the um, sap and they will also produce honeydew. So really what you've got to do is you've got to either, again, You've got to get a natural predator in, um, or you're going to use my bug killing concoction. I'm going to say that a lot, right? Because that concoction will kill just about everything you put in its path. So maybe I should put a little keyword in there rather than keep banging on about it. But anyway, that's what that's what white fly are. They're actually pretty easy to spot because they are. They're just going to fly off. They look like little white moths. So next on the list, and these little guys are a nightmare when you get them, they're called spider mites, right? Now they are tiny, you cannot see them really by, uh, until you've actually got a web, you cannot really easily see them. The first indication of spider mite will be tiny peppering color of the leaf where they've basically done the same as the aphids and the white fly. They've cut through and they've sucked all the chlorophyll and all the sap out of the leaf. So they are extremely challenging when you then get them into a colony. So the first indication generally that people have a spider mite is the web that they produce. So where a leaf will kind of go like this, you'll see this kind of line of web going in between the leaf um, areas and then eventually those will then the the, um, the web will build up around the leaf or the flower head and then they are there are tons of them in there and at that point your history essentially so spider mites are really challenging not only when you get them but also eradicating you definitely need to hit them hard and you hit need to hit them fast and actually i would say that the bug killing concoction um, is your best bet with these because yes you can get a predator in and yes you can have a go of those but by that point they will have essentially done the damage and they will literally kill the entire plant dead so that is spider mite right peeps those are the top three right we're going to now calm down a bit in terms of the damage with these we're now going to talk about fungus gnat now i know fungus gnat is quite possibly the most irritating thing ever created in the world right they are so annoying they are the tiny little black flies that will then fly around your system and land on your leaves and you think you've got them all done and the next minute you know you've got another load right fungus gnats do no damage whatsoever to the actual plant what they can do is their larvae which you will find in the actual where you put the seed in that substrate the, they are like tiny little horrible little worms, right? And they will basically, they can damage the roots if you have too many of them. But essentially, I've never seen them do damage other than to my sanity because I can't stand the things. Now, how do you get rid of them? Essentially, you've got to go at it in, in two levels, right? You've got to go at it 
for some reason, they are completely attracted, and this is the case with lots of different flying um, insects, they are very attracted to the color yellow, to the point where they're almost insane about it. So you get a yellow sticky trap, right? That is something that's bright yellow and massively sticky. So when they, when they hit on it, they get stuck, and that's the end of it. So the yellow sticky traps are really good, and then trying to hit the, the actual um, babies or the larvae, you're basically gonna have to use one of two things. Either you're gonna use hydrogen peroxide in your liquid nutrient, so that will then go in and as the system circulates, it's gonna soak into the substrate and that will potentially kill the larvae. Or you're gonna use something called mosquito bits. Now mosquito bits is something actually from the US and it is totally natural. Um, it is a, a type of pathogen that basically kills them, right? So it is for killing mosquitoes, but it also kills the larvae of fungus gnats. So you make up a tea and you put it into your liquid nutrient and uh, I'll do another video on that because it's actually really interesting. And springtails now, though these are weird little creatures, right? They've got these two little forks uh, of, of antennae in their head and um, they either run around like maniacs or they can jump as well. Now they aren't really, they're not massively important for indoor grows. They generally, you'll find them in house plants quite heavily because they love to eat rotten and decaying matter. And um, obviously you don't really get that with a hydroponic or an aer aeroponic system. So I put them there so that you can have a look at them, you can see them and you can identify that actually they are what they are and they're actually not that bad. Unlike thrips, thrips on the other hand can cause and will cause damage to your plant. They are very, very small. They're long and thin. If you put um, a piece of paper, it's a really good one this. If you put a piece of paper under your plant and you shake it and you things fall out and you identify these what look like tiny grains of green rice but smaller and thinner then that is a, is, is a young thrip. So they will basically do the same as the aphids, the white flies, they are rasping. So they're going to be sucking the juice out. They often create more of a sort of silvering on the leaf. Um, they are and they are pretty challenging to get rid of once you've got thrips. Um, again, it's the natural predator killer, no point in banging on about that. That's what I would potentially use for that. Flea beetles, do you see the way my eyes open with those? I hate them. They are a nightmare. Uh, they are essentially tiny little round, it's not that tiny. They're kind of like probably half the size of your little finger and they are black, they are shiny. The reason they're called flea beetles is that you go anywhere near them and they ping off and you've no idea where they've gone and that is the end of it. They will basically really only hit brassicas. That's what they love. So how do you know whether you've got flea beetles? Basically small holes in your um, plant leaf. It basically looks like it's been hit by a shotgun and uh, they're generally, the holes can be quite, they're, they're quite good as in round um, holes. They will essentially, really what will happen is they'll all come out at one time. And so you'll have, you'll see one flea beetle on it there and the next thing you know, you have got like a million of them. So that's a flea beetle. As I said, brassicas really, pak choy, but they also like rocket, they like radish, they like things like that. But as I say, shotgun on the leaf, flea beetle. Mealybugs, just the weirdest things. They look like walking moustaches, white ones of that. They are weirdly hairy, they're strange, really, really odd things. So what damage they do? Same as the other ones, rasping, they're eating the um, sap and, um, and then producing the honeydew, remember, sugar poo. That basically will then attract the black sooty mold, which um, is not good for your plant that is essentially going to cause fungal issues and things like that. So they will basically just stunt the plant growth by eating away at it. You know, it's the same with all of them. The more damage to the plant, the more it then stunts it and makes it harder for it to grow. So essentially they're nothing special in terms of the damage and actually they're relatively easy-ish to get rid of. Natural predator killer. Right, lastly, I'm done with talking about bugs. 
Scale bugs. Scale bugs are funny little things. They look like almost like uh, a barnacle that you see on the side of a rock in the sea, right? They are like little scabs on the side of uh, the plant. Basically, they do, if they haven't got wings and they haven't got legs and they don't move, you know you've got a scale bug. It sits on the side of the plant and it basically doesn't move at all and just burrows in, pulls out the sap, that's it. So again, natural predator killer. Right team, I hope that was useful. Bugs, done. I now keep banging on about the old uh, natural predator killer. I thoroughly recommend getting some of that in preparation for something happening because the number one thing you've got to do is check your plants regularly and then react quickly if you have a problem. If you do that, you're not going to have a problem because a single bug on a leaf is not an issue. It's when that single bug decides to set up home with create a family, reproduce, and then you have a real problem. So just be on it. Just be checking your plants weekly and have some of the uh, predator killer in the background so that you can take action. Anyway, bugs done. Had enough of bugs. Let's move on to something a lot more. In well, bugs are interesting, actually. I've done some really interesting stuff with bugs, but we're going to move on to micros next. That's going to be really interesting. I found a really, really great way of um, creating micros in a small rock wall cube that you can put in your system and then be taking cuttings for your meals of the highly nutritious micros. Anyway, see you on the next.